The Snake River steeped in the cold hands of a hardy fisherman. The coffee and the river are steaming together. You are aboard the Idaho Queen number two, headed up the mighty Snake River on a two-day adventure that includes hunting geese, deer, and fishing for steelhead. Your skipper and guide, Dick Rivers. This is our Snake River story. John Hobart, your cameraman host with another high and wild adventure. And today, the Snake River. Once each week, a boat leaves Lewiston, Idaho, carrying mail and passengers up the Snake River. Every Wednesday morning at daylight, rain or shine, winter or summer, the Idaho Queen number two, in the hands of her very capable skipper, makes the run into the mighty wilderness of rock cliffs and wild white water known as Hell's Canyon. The ranchers who live in the canyon during the winter must depend on the Idaho Queen for their supplies. And during the winter months, the mountains 5,000 feet above the river become locked in ice and snow. To escape the bitter cold and the impossible feeding conditions of the high country, the wildlife migrate to the more comfortable climates along the banks of the river. To the hunter, the fisherman, and the photographer, this is a winterland paradise. Our story in just a moment. Time, tide, and the Snake River mail boat wait for no one. So the boat left without me. The only way up the river other than by boat is by airplane. With the snows of winter licking at my heels, I missed the boat at Lewiston. I hired a small airplane, I mean small, to fly me up 70 miles to catch that boat, 70 miles up the mighty Hell's Canyon. The Snake River winds below us. This is winter. We're skimming across the rock walls, the towering mass of rock that makes up the 5,000 foot deep canyon of the snake. of the Salmon River as it runs from Idaho. The Snake River is the dividing line between Oregon and Idaho. I land on a hillside, a very short, very dangerous runway. This pilot has flown this canyon for 15 years, and I, I'm sure he knows every landing spot. His takeoff, he drops me off in the heart of Hell's Canyon, and then flies away and leaves me. Seventy miles up the canyon, at Copper River Bar, is the camp of Dick's Rivers. He is the skipper of the Idaho Queen. They quickly pick me up from the landing spot that the airplane dropped me and bring me to the camp, which is well equipped for winter and summer residents.
This camp can be reached only by boat. Ray Kiernan here thought he was going to get out of doing the morning dishes, but they trap him on the next turnaround. Bill Gregory, Ray Kiernan, and Garth Caldwell are our dish doers here, and they're doing a fine job. Down on the banks of the snake, the Idaho Queen number two sits nestled against a sandbar. The temperatures here now are nine degrees below zero. The mists of the warm Snake River as it boils down through this canyon make a strange combination. Everett Spaulding, another guide on the river, is taking some of his steelhead fishermen and goose hunters down the river while we will be going up. Trying to string a steelhead rod at nine degrees below zero is a bit of a problem. You have to make about four grabs of that monofilament line and then it seems to slip out of those numb fingers. Ah, finally made it. That gentleman holding the rod would just quit reeling in. We might make it to the end of the rod. And this gentleman is loaded for bear, or I should say goose. He's going goose hunting, steelhead fishing, steelhead fishing, and uh, his partner is blowing up the goose decoys. Of course, you have to be quick and get that plug in the back end or they all go flat. fasten the legs to them and stand them up on the nearest sandbar and just hope that a goose flying over will stop and investigate. This is Everett Spaulding. He is a Salmon River and Snake River guide. This is the Idaho Queen number two. It's a 40-foot, very powerful, diesel-powered boat. With this, we will be going another 30 miles up the Snake River above Copper River Camp. Its skipper, Dick Rivers. He's been on this river for over 20 years. He knows every rock, and today it's just a little bit chilly. If you're ready, let's go. Idaho Queen starts its trip above the camp. The mists rising from the river are turning a pink in the morning sun, and the ice-covered rocks along the banks are coal black. What an unreal look at the effect here. It's almost ghostly. Dick will be stopping from time to time to drop off mail and supplies to the ranchers who populate the canyon during this, the winter months. They're continually wiping the windshield inside and out. The spray from the waves outside make ice, and on the inside it's steam, and the rock walls look down upon us. You make a turn and find a lone figure waiting on a sandbar. This is a rancher. He's waiting for his winter supplies to come in. He has his pack train, and with these horses he will pack the supplies up over the mountain and back to the ranch that is hidden maybe six miles back in a canyon. We'll get to our unloading of supplies in a moment. A photographer's job is kind of easy especially when you take pictures of other people working.
hundreds of tons of supplies will be shipped up the river during the winter season. Blocks of salt for the cattle and sheep, horse feed, sacks of grain, fence posts, roofing. It's a strange collection, but it is the supplies for the ranchers in the canyon. Sure-footed mules are the pack train that will carry the supplies up to the main ranch, possibly hidden back in a canyon from the main river. The coffee and the river are both steaming together and probably for the same reason. The tremendous temperature changes here. The outside air temperature about nine degrees below zero and the river is comparatively warm and hence the strange effect of the steam. Idaho Queen powers its way up through the wild white water of the Snake River. This is Hell's Canyon and it's well named. The waters of this mighty river hide rocks and boulders that could be very dangerous to the amateur boatmen. A flock of geese take off and move up the canyon ahead of us. Many geese and ducks winter here in the canyon. It takes a steady hand and a lot of knowledge to put a boat 40 feet long up over these rapids every week. You must know the bottom of that river like the palm of your hand, the white water of the snake. The spray, we move up. The tracks in the snow along the river tell their story. A raccoon has passed back and forth this way in search of food, while downriver a little ways a coyote has been watching him. The call chuckers on the Oregon side and three hunters move out, but now those chuckers are wild. They just get a quick look and they are gone. So it's back to the boat unsuccessful, and the last man picks up the ladder. It's frozen to the side of the boat. A rancher tells us there are some geese just up the way, around the bend. The boys make their way off across a small horse pasture alongside the river and are almost attacked by <laughs> these inquisitive horses. You stalk a goose and you're going to get maybe one or two shots. Down he goes. A broken wing and it takes one more to finish it. This man would rather come up with a smart old Canadian goose than a deer. The rest of the geese fly on up the canyon. Idaho Queen swings in and makes a landing. 
Dick Rivers seems to be able to land this boat almost any place he picks. And it's a big boat. And there you have it, about a nine pound Canadian goose, a prize trophy, believe me. The canyons are now filled with deer from the high country, and Ray Kiernan has a legal deer tag. Now, he doesn't take a big buck, which he could have very easily taken. He's going to pick on a small deer. There are two kinds, a bragging deer and an eating deer, and he just missed a good eating deer, but the second shot did a job. He picks his spots quite well. Down off the rock slopes comes his trophy. It should be well tenderized before it gets to the boat. The other deer move up and away. There are literally hundreds of them in the canyon now. Well, Kiernan picked his spot very carefully. He doesn't believe in carrying deer very far. It rolled almost to the boat. Again, the Idaho Queen swings in to pick us up. <laughs> to haul a deer out of these rocky crags would have taken hours. That was the easy way. We'll be back after this time out. Not only is this winter weather hard on the wildlife and cattle in this country, it's also pretty tough on the people who live here. Ninety-three miles up the river from Lewiston, we make our turnaround. We make our turn in the mists and then start back down the river. Now the signal for the boat to stop is a white flag. And at the Van Pool Ranch, we found the white flag. And Harris Hill, this cowboy here, with both hands frozen, goes out to the hospital at Lewiston. He will be in the hospital at six o'clock tonight. Monarch of the Snake River Canyon. Look at this gigantic mule deer buck. He's found his wintering ground up here in these high rocky cliffs, and there he stays. Coloring blends perfectly with these rocks. You can see his white rump patch, and that's just about all you can see as he moves up into his wintering ground. While down on the more lower country, the does are watching us move by. And in their characteristic spring-like jumps, move up and away from us. In a five-mile distance here, we counted over 500 head of deer. Down the river, the boys have picked a likely-looking sandbar to do a little fishing in. Have you ever fished in a pair of gloves? Ray Kiernan likes it. Anybody would like it with the weather the way it is. Bill Gregory uses no gloves at all. And look at the ice on this rod guide. Eventually, you have to break the ice off to let the line slide through the guide. But it takes about three casts. And Bill isn't quite sure. He got a tap, a tap, and then he is sure. That rod takes off with that violent bend that tells you you have a steelhead.
steelhead is a rainbow trout that has gone to sea. When he first leaves the ocean, he is bright and silvery color, but once he gets back into fresh water, he takes on the coloring of a rainbow trout with the red stripe down his side, a 12 pound rainbow trout. He has the same instincts and can put up the same kind of a fight with that extra weight of a salmon. fish has traveled well over 500 miles from the ocean. He's headed back up the stream, or he was until Bill short-circuited him here with that strange-looking lure. You better keep a good hold on him, Bill. He isn't about to give up yet. It's a prize any fisherman can be proud of. When you land one of these, these babies on light tackle, you're a good fisherman. You take one and move on down the river in the Idaho Queen. We're headed back toward Lewiston, Idaho now, under the hands of your skipper, Dick Rivers. He hauls passengers up the river during the summer, mostly. He has room for 22 passengers aboard the Idaho Queen number two. And he plays the controls, well, like a piano player. Those are the throttles. And when he needs power, he has plenty of it. The rock walls go flashing by. You have now the speed of the boat with the speed of the current also added. Notice the narrowness of this river. It narrows down to 60 feet in one place. High rock walls of Hell's Canyon go flashing by. This is no place for an amateur boatman, believe me. The boat flashes on down through the white water and the wash piles up on the rock walls behind us. This is the mighty Snake River. taken many trips up the Snake River on the Idaho Queen, but I must say that this one was one of the most spectacular. The swirling mists of the river and the rock walls towering above you. To a photographer, Hills Canyon is ever-changing. And yet this mighty canyon carved by the Snake River will remain the same forever. Until next week, this is Don Hobart wishing each of you good fishing, good hunting, and good luck.